Very, very, very warm welcome to the Product Book Clubs at another book review. And today we are crushing the fourth book. It means that we have successfully done four weeks, one month out of the 52 weeks. So that's awesome. So today we are going to review uh, Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath. If you care about creating sticky ideas and you wanted to rock with your storytelling, this is your book. And if you want to go ahead and understand like how the product book club works, here is a bunch of uh, scheduled, paced book reviews that we will be doing week after week. For 52 weeks, we will do 52 books, four is done. I know that's crazy, but that's what we will do. So here is a homegrown technique of 1030. So 10 big ideas from the book distilled under 30 minutes by our special reviewers. Um, the best way to imbibe a book is by reading by yourself. The second best is to tune in into our 10 by 30 review. So today we will do a 10 by 30 review for our made to stick. Hi everyone, as Kati just said, today we are reviewing made to stick. And uh, this book is actually useful to almost everyone because it's how to make your ideas stickier and better. Whether you are a marketer or a teacher or a journalist or a product manager, it's applicable everywhere. And we had a lot of fun reading it. Uh, our team today consists of me, Ananya, Shubham, Shruti, Arvind, and Naga. Uh, guys, you can say hi. It's a nice bunch yeah. of people from different like professions. So we had a lot of new perspectives coming in. Now, starting with the book title itself, Made to Stick, what exactly is sticky? And sticky is something which is understandable, right from a five-year-old to an 80-year-old person. It should be clear, whatever your message is. It should be memorable, like long after the content has been passed. And it should also lead to some change in thought or behavior. So what's a thing without a action, uh, essentially? Uh, moving forward, the book is actually a very, uh, in a storytelling format, but based out of a very core formula, which is success formula. And it's quite sticky because we're all quite obsessed with success. Uh, it essentially means simple, unexpected, concrete, credible, emotional, and stories. These might look like abstract concepts right now, but as we move forward through the review, each of these concepts would be explained with a lot of examples and how we can actually use it to make the idea sticky. Uh, over to the first idea, uh, Shubham. Hi, everyone. So yeah, continuing from the Ananya, what she, she said. So first idea is about simple. So how your idea should, should be so simple that to make your idea effective, it is very important to the, to the extent, the, the core of the message, and then the, keep the whole everything like idea simple. When you say so many things or like three things, you say nothing. So let me give you an example, very relatable to Indian context. In this film, like how you communicate during the war situation, because this whole environment is like so noisy, unpredictable, chaotic, the context is not easy. So how to communicate, how the commander will communicate the very intent of it. So they try to uh, communicate with the intent. So in this scene, you, you must, those who have seen the picture, in the scene, they have planned it, everything with, with all the visuals, with, with all the like minute details. But in the at the end, in the in the movie, they plan to go into the territory via uh, like air, by flying there. But somehow they, 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 they are not allowed and they need to change the plan. So as per the plan, the intent was to go there. So by the, so they change the plan in the air and they go by a, some kind of like tunnel, which which you already dug by the terrorist and they used it. So intent is to like hit them fast, hit them hard and come back with zero casualty. So you can see the, the way to success is simplicity. Stripe the idea to the code and no superfluous and element at all. So intent was clear. We need to go there. We need to come back safely and we, we do the rest of everything. So these kind of communication help us to stick like. Uh, what Shubham told was the author calls it commander's intent, right? Instead of putting across the entire plan, like tell the intent to everyone so people will act accordingly. So I will I will try to double double that up and tell, uh, explain you simple is equal to core plus compact. Like let's see with an example in the next slide. So core, core is something which is important, right? Like whenever you're talking something, like whenever you're, even you're talking in your meetings or something, people will ask that what is the core of the message? Like what are you trying, what's the object to, what are you trying to achieve, right? 
So core is something which is uh, very important. And let me take an example, Southwest Airlines, right? So Southwest Airlines is uh, one of the low cost airlines and it is one of the very few airlines which is profitable in last 20, 30 years. And uh, in Southwest Airlines, they have a very core message that is we are a low cost, low cost airline. And that was, uh, uh, let's, let me tell through a story, right? So it's, it's very relatable. That was a time when one of the air hostess came and told uh, the senior management that uh, told the senior management that let's add chicken salad in the menu. Like people, people love it a lot. They give a lot of feedback. And then um, how to decide now, right? Uh, the CEO uh, gives only one uh, tool to them. Like uh, what's that core message? Like uh, it is low cost salads. Then he asked the air hostess that if we add the chicken salad to the menu, will it uh, make us a low cost salad? Like if it makes it, then please add it. If it does not, then don't add it. It's very clear to them. So it's 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 very the core message is uh, simple, and uh, it's uh, core core is there as well as compact. Like let me let me say what is compact and why it should be compact, right? So uh, compact ideas help people learn and remember a core message. Like if you say a core message and tell them like one paragraph, two paragraph, and so on, right? Very big people are not going to remember it. So it has to be very compact. And, and I'll give you one more example. Like it was 1992 when uh, Clinton was running for uh, president and it was Clinton's campaign. And Clinton was kind of a person like who used to uh, talk and then react to every messages. And Clinton's campaign manager itself was uh, very uh, unhappy that he's not very focused. Then a campaign manager came up with a very simple message. It's core plus compact. Like it's the economy stupid. Then they spoke more about the economy is not doing good and we would have to work on that. And this was the message. Like anyone in their party, if they talk about, they will talk on those things if the economy is stupid. It's equal, simple is equal to core plus compact. So if you do this, then your idea will stick forever. Now you understood the how, how it idea should be simple and to the core and compact. Now, how like make you understand? So the human way, like mind works in in through the schemas. So what is schema? Next big idea is about schemas. Schemas is nothing but but to understand the uh, how to understand a complex situation by by using pre-recorded information from your mind and try to visualize something which is relatable to us and try to understand the bigger com com like idea. Let me give you an example in the next slide. So can you guess? Uh, what is is all about? Like, can you guess the picture? Some more, some more guys. Sun, yes. Sun is like uh, you, the moment you saw a picture, you create a sun in your head. This is a electron model. So this was actually electron model which we studied in a, in our class. And actually, to just to relate, this is called as actual real in reality. This is just a probability of cloud where in the whole cloud electron can be anywhere. So to make you understand, authors or the in the textbook. From a, from the from your school childhood age, they they started related to the solar system, but in reality, electron don't have a like precise path and, and mass. It's just a probability of cloud. Next thing is a third big idea, which is about gap theory. So what is gap theory? So they are playing around with all sorts of like emotions, like curiosity. It happens when we feel a feel a gap in our existing knowledge, and this gap creates a pain, and this pain tend to stick in our memory. Which actually plays around when we uh, when we actually binge watch. So what is happening in the, in the series at the end? It gives us a pain actually. So that's why you tend to escape to the next episode to the next episode, and that's why you binge watch. And the next set of similarly it's like mysteries. Mysteries are painful. They create the need of closure by using the 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 same phenomenon. The Hollywood and the Bollywood, they are all using all sorts of juices, creative juices, because mysteries is like a, like a science experiment, where the end result gives you a sense of accomplishment. Achieving to the end of the mystery will give you a sense of like, like sense of achievement. So the, all sorts of these surprise mysteries will cater to an idea which will stick you in, in your memory. When do we find something considerable? Uh, what source or person do we find? Uh, con do we consider credible? Let's uh, let's ponder over that. So as you all can see, uh, we are uh, especially in this day and age, we are there's an immense information in, in overload. We are spoiled for choices. So in such a scenario, whom do we whom do we consider credible? So there are there are two ways look uh, that we look at it. One is your uh, following what your celebrities or your influencers tell us. Uh, as 
here suppose you want a protein shake uh, you look at a poster of virat kohli and you you are pretty convinced that what he's showing is uh, credible secondly we um, we trust experts a lot expert opinion so if there's a recession today whom do we trust is it a mere uh, hearsay is it a uh, is it a rumor or is it validated by say the world bank or an imf we will trust it in that case right however i want to take you all to another concept which is act concept wise it's called anti authority but it's pretty pretty simple so very recently i was on a trip with some unknown people and uh, in a travelers group and i met this lady we were in the car and we we didn't have any point of conversation we didn't know each other but i realized that her skin her skin was amazing it was i mean it was it was very it was really be- it was really beautiful so i asked her that you know what what do you do and what 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 do you use she was more than happy to explain tell me what she does and uh, what she what product she uses and uh, coming com- coming from someone like that from whom i can uh, it's a uh, it, it's it's a see said thing right that it is uh, her skin is good i would any i would trust the product uh, with closed eyes another thing uh, another thing is how often do we believe someone who has details almost always right we always give it a thought so how many of you all consider someone with knowledge as a proxy for expertise we all do that right we all would think uh, think through this so consider someone who is a couch potato and he considers he considers running he, next level he goes to 10k then say he plans to run a 21k the um, the, the whole thing it hits him harder it goes on a 42k ultra marathon the whole chain keeps on going now consider someone who just thinks about this entire chain vis-a-vis someone who has you know been been there in the field been there done that now um, among these two extremes there will always be someone who's who started stop been there spoken to some people network with some runners been in some groups now that person if you think about it he also knows everything what a runner does so will you when he throws facts at you will you not listen to him will you not give him a thought you will right you will consider his knowledge still probably as a proxy so this is something to ponder upon that's awesome shruti hey folks you've hit the half line mark hope things are sticking if not i have an interesting exercise to pump your neurons cool the question that i have is you know analytical hat versus emotional hat what's the difference right so uh, i want you to just keep thinking about it anyway i'll pump in your neurons to get things more you're going to do some crowd work over here you're going to pick up two people from the crowd uh probably you're going to pick shiv charan hey yeah, shiv you are mute say yourself hi uh we have kaushiki and we have naga okay superb hey kaushiki done hi uh, hey kaushiki we're going to put you in a breakout room we're going to present this mm-hmm. scenario to naga then i'm going to pull you back in and present the same case to you are you okay with it yep sure see you in a bit uh before i press into naga i want to tell the audience we all know what smoking does right i want to reiterate the facts over here tobacco causes 12 type of cancer three out of cigarette smokers die tobacco is a major risk factor which causes 1.35 million deaths every year that's a lot i know we are reiterated we've been seen this a lot of times but i want to reiterate for a second so we have a story here life story story of terry a beautiful wonderful cheerleader who right across through high school was the uh, uh, you know i candy in a college uh, she was a single mother she had two beautiful kids she grew up all but through her life she was stuck with smoking and this is a state right now she's 51 years old single mother who have two kids she wants to live right now despite knowing all the facts she was smoking now she is looking out for a donation that's the idea which she wants to stick and she wants to raise money so now i just want to ask you a question right on a scale of 0 to 100 grand 100 grand is the money that she wants to revive and get a second chance in life how much would you give yeah i i don't have enough information about her maybe as you say if it's really needed for that maybe some 20 30 grand 20 30 grand okay that's very very kind of you superb uh we'll have kaushiki back uh, and she'll join us about in hey hi hi, hi. Yeah yes i just told them a story na you didn't miss much basically i'll reiterate okay. this to you story of terry what you see over here she's a beautiful okay. leader who was the eye candy in a college she grew up to be the popular chick 
then she married she had two beautiful kids and now they are well settled but what happened through a life course she picked up cancer this is her current state on the right uh okay she, yeah so she a biggest fear is that she doesn't have enough money because she was a single mother who raised two kids uh she has a fear that she won't be able to see her grandchildren graduate or get married she needs 100 grand for her to get a second chance in life let's say you mm-hmm. have all the all the wherewithal in your life right how much mm-hmm. money would you give to her on a scale of 0 to 100k um i would give probably 100k if i have all the wealth and i can see that she really cares about seeing her grandchildren graduate or get married so yep that's, i would do that that's fantastic so to everybody else who are outside of the call emotional appeal always works so kaushiki just before you join us is talking to the analytical side of things i'm saying that hey she knew what is the risk of cancer i didn't i didn't open up this side of the story and i just told it out so what it means is if you want an idea to stick appeal to the emotional side it always works so kaushiki is kind enough to give 100k and naga though he is kind enough was ready to give about 20 to 30k though both of them hypothetical currencies right so emotional appeal always work make an idea speak to the emotion not to the rational mind and yeah. just to add like i've been seeing doordash do that completely uh, to add more tips for the doordashers in the us uh, they've been showing like pictures of uh, like hey these are the people getting to you um with the food delivery so will you tip more uh, for them they're not explicitly saying tip more but they're showing the picture whenever you go to add tip i think they're adding to that emotional side yep. and we all think yeah <laughs> <laughs> you you youtubers could have that's only nowadays hey uh, thank you thank you arvin uh, now arvin spoke about the emotional part uh, let let me talk about uh, like little bit uh, more rational part right i'm going to talk about concrete so concrete and abstract i'm going to talk about uh, two concepts here and then uh, so whenever you uh, present your idea you talk to uh, people right you talk to multiple stakeholders you talk to different kinds of people uh, in a room so uh, in that case uh, you don't know what what knowledge they have and then what they understand and stuff uh, in those cases abstracting and then explaining them like which obviously product people like but it's not going to work out because people are different so uh, abstract is only for people like who really understand that topic uh, so concrete is uh, a safe game which is going to help you to keep your idea stick so let me take an example and explain so understanding subtraction right uh, whenever we were kids like lot of people lot of us uh, uh, like we struggled because addition was very simple it's it's like 1 plus 1 2 but subtraction was a very complicated you had to borrow from someone and subtract and stuff so uh, there was a research that uh, like american students were not doing uh, better in math as like uh, southeast asian students right so uh, this is this is a, like a fact uh, and then we have read about it already so but uh, they did a research and uh, they try to uh, take uh, 20 uh, schools uh, from us and then some uh, 10 schools from japan and 10 schools from taiwan and then they ran a research uh, how how was the teaching done and how was the teachers teaching and stuff they found out that uh in the southeast asian um uh, like uh, countries right, like japan and in taiwan like people people uh, took some ideas which were already known to these people like for example when they taught subtraction they said uh, let's take your five balls and your brother takes three balls and how much do you have and then uh, they thought that okay there are 50 50 tiles uh, put in uh, five rows 10 10 slice each 10 tiles each and we're removing 20 20 tiles how much it is so they were trying to use that uh, the concept which they already know that that concrete uh, uh, thing and they trying to uh, explain them the abstraction like like that's how these schools were uh, very successful in mathematics when compared to uh, the schools in the us so this is this is one of the examples where uh, concrete uh, if you if you be very concrete on what you're saying it's going to sell and concrete is also a way of mobilizing and focusing your brain like let us do an activity right white things activity I, uh, the author calls this white things activity i'll i'll give you one thing like try to write down or try to uh, uh, like think uh, as many things that are white in color you can think of like try to think about it like i'll just uh, we'll take some 15 20 seconds now i'll make it more concrete think about things in the refrigerator which are white so uh, even i did this exercise even i had the same uh, thing like when i was thinking about white i was not able to think much but when i was uh, trying to think more uh, specific like concrete 
the refrigerator is the concrete thing here like i was able to think more so so it's it's about it it keeps your brain focused and then it it makes you think and it makes you relate so whenever you communicate for example uh, if you tell uh, in, in any company in any role uh, the the management can say that we want to build the best in class customer experience so but everyone in the room won't understand what is best in class but if you say that i want to build an experience which can improve the csat by x percentage or improve the nps by this much people will exactly understand what i want to do so uh, be as concrete as possible because you won't know what everyone in the room uh, knows already so so your uh, ideas will stick so building on what just naga said to understand what sticks also uh, one of the interesting things that the book mentioned was how memory works it's not like a single filing cabinet where everything what we remember remembers in the same way say for example the date of the world war 2 and the events there versus the plot of the movie shindler's list you would remember each of these things differently if you have watched the movie you will remember probably the plot more clearly than the list of history events and dates so similarly uh, what the book states is the memory is like a velcro if you have seen a velcro in like shoes and different straps it's basically a series of interconnected hooks on two surfaces which join together and clasp together so the more hooks we have the better we are able to retain it and absorb it better uh, one of the main uh, good examples of the velcro theory is a school teacher in us she basically tried to teach her students racial prejudice which is such a important topic but also such a complex topic to teach to like school kids she essentially divided the class into blue eyed and brown eyed people uh, kids and said that the blue eyed ones are superiors and they'll get all the privileges like extra breaks no uh, assignments and while the brown eyed ones would have to like sit in the back kind of face that sort of uh, prejudice for a day and uh, some of the behavior of the kids changed when they realized okay they are the superior ones and the next day she came back and said oh i made a mistake it's actually the brown eyed ones which are the superior ones and they'll get all the privileges while the blue ones won't now years passed like those kids graduated their school colleges but the lesson remained with them and every time they see any act of racial injustice this action comes because it's made so clear and it's basically stuck to them like a velcro now just how can actually we make things tangible uh, this one idea that i wanted to discuss uh, if you move to the next slides just feel what this picture makes you feel you can write in the chat if you want to or you can just absorb the pictures as we move forward and i'll end it on a better note a warm and sweet gulab jamun so as a lot of you might experience going through the pictures it's all wet cold probably like splashing of water those sort of sounds moving to a more uh, fragrant rose and then i ended up with like a warm feeling which is a comforting feeling towards the end what is happening in these pictures without the use of words me talking anything or anything written on the slides is the senses are getting engaged through these pictures now obviously here the credit goes to the photographers of the respective images but then sensory in information whether through words visuals or videos is a very important part in making things concrete and in basically optimizing for the velcro like memory that we all have uh, if we can move to the next slide uh, yeah so we have five senses all of us knows uh, and if we can optimize these and use these in our ideas in a certain way that will definitely make the experience more sensory and also more sticky and more effective as as a matter So now moving to the next idea. So um, <clears throat> any idea which you want to present to people, right? Uh, everything boils down to the what's in it for the end user. Only when it makes sense for the end user, they would actually be a part of the conversation. We have about thirty-three people here in the call, right? Uh, every one of you taking the time out of your Sunday evening to sit over here because you have a purpose. You want to take away something out of this call. Let's appeal to that. What matters to people? If you see a broader picture. matters to people people matter to themselves i mean it's no surprise that you will make people care only when you invoke that self interest in them let's say you know i put kaushik on a spot or abhijit on a spot or naga on a spot they're here they're ready to get on the spot because they want take away this book so any idea which you want to do if you appeal to the self interest of them what value they will get out of it 
that idea we will stick let's talk about the last idea which is the curse of knowledge it seems like a oxymoron because knowledge in general is something we all want to attain how can that be a curse turns out it can be situations where we know more than the audience or we know a little more context about the topic that we are sharing about so the curse of knowledge essentially means if i know a certain level about a particular subject and i'm sharing a, uh, about it to the other people i share them as they would get it like basically distilling down the basic concepts and everything just for an example if i am a tourist in a country where english is not spoken curse of knowledge essentially means me speaking louder and slowly so that the other person can understand the problem is not in like how i speak the problem is actually the language itself probably i need to drill down to gestures or understand the knowledge of the uh, language of the other person so that actually just the awareness that we have this knowledge and we might suffer from this curse actually goes a long way in avoiding all the pitfalls of our ineffective idea so after all the 10 ideas i'll move to the summary i talked about success in the beginning of the slide uh, now i'm just uh, we illustrated it with various anecdotes and examples so it's essentially uh, we can try to make our idea simple so that the audience can grasp the core and make it compact make it unexpected so that they pay attention concrete so that they can understand and remember what we are talking about credible so that they can believe us emotional for them to care for us and then finally the stories to actually make them act on the idea that we have uh, that's all from our team 